It's what, what the girls do. Yeah, pooch and them that, with. And that ain't Kylie? <laughs> what? Is that the pose? Um, Claire, is that the pose? I don't think so. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Y'all both like, oh my gosh, is he really? <laughs> So Shane, you know the question, stuff that you do at home that you don't normally do in front of people? I kind of do that in front of people, so it kind of doesn't apply to me. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll hear in a minute. <laughs> it doesn't apply to me. Oh, okay. I'm kind of the same no matter where I'm at. So, yeah, yeah I embarrass all the girls anyway. So. It's okay. My filter's slowly going anyways as my kids get older. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, I need to see that face one time. He's like, Hello. There it is. Hey. I was actually making guacamole when I heard you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But my hands were messed, so I couldn't um, unmute it. <laughs> That's funny. I like guacamole after it's set out on the counter for about 30 minutes. <laughs> It turns brown. That's the grossest thing I've ever Bar. seen. In your <laughs> That's fun. You just stir the brown back in and everything goes green, man. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Everybody's looking like they're outside today. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Hottest, day, hottest day of the year so far. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Yep. I might be outside here in a minute. Mikey's computer is like getting all these messages coming across and just screens going off. That's why I asked if I still on there. He You're came down good. and checked it. So You're still good. Okay, you want to get us rolling? And yep, we'll go ahead and get, we'll go ahead and get rolling because um, we got a lot of stuff to get to after the lesson tonight um, yep. based on what happened last night with our meeting and hopefully you got the notif notification <clears throat> either through email or word of mouth today that church is reopening soon. So we got, we got some things we got to get to afterwards. So um, Richard, you want to pray for us? Then we're going to jump in with the game and get rolling with the lesson. I'm on it. Uh, dear Lord, uh, just come to you and just, peacefulness and quiet that we can find your God and and just help us to just focus on you to put everything else out of our lives and the chaos and the craziness that's of this world help us just to look forward to those days when we get to be with you forever dear God um, as we um, see the things that are going on in our nation and 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 all just everything that's going on is it's it's just crazy dear god but we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're still in control and um you have a plan and you know that this is leading somewhere thank you for that dear god be with each one of us in a group this size that we all have concerns we all have questions and dear god help us to just voice them to you but dear god most of all help us just to be peaceful and still and listen to you and just Listen to what your will is for our lives. Dear God, uh, be with Craig and Shane and every, the ones that bring the lesson to us tonight. And dear God, thank you for your word. Even though some of the things are Old Testament, dear God, they apply to today so much. Uh, thank you for that. Dear God, I love you and just love, you, love everybody there. And dear God, as our, be with our church and our leaders. And as we go to... Um, Start opening up, help us to make the right decisions and the decisions that you want us to make. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. We are going to be in the Old Testament tonight. So I thought it would be very fitting to have a game called Old Test Emoji. And basically, you're going to get some emojis and you need to guess the story from the Old Testament with what it's about. That's plain and simple. All right. So hold on. Let me clear that one and. Here we go. Should be able to get this one. Bryson, don't wreck. 
Garden it's the beginning, isn't it? Garden it of Eden. Is. Oh, yeah. it is. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. <laughs> All right. A little tougher. A little tougher. What Bible character do you think this is? Oh. Joseph. Let me clear that one. That's a weird one. <laughs> that is the Bible character you can guess. Um, Jonah and the well. There we go. All right. All right. All right, how about this one? I'm going to clear it. And Moses. You are correct. Moses and the burning bush. Burning bush. All right, last one. Last one here. Samson. Samson. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. We might do it again next week, but this is kind of setting up where we're going tonight, um, being in the Old Testament and understanding the stories and how they apply to our life um, with the story of Joseph tonight. So, Greg, I'll let, you, I'll let you jump in and go from there, buddy. All right. So, um, all the crazy stuff going on in our world today, um, what do you do when you don't know what to do? That's the, that's the question that we're going to be looking at for the next several weeks. Um, like Shane said, we are beginning the process of reopening uh, the church, and uh, a lot of people don't know what to do and don't know which way to turn or whether to come, whether not to come, whether to uh, you know, wear a mask, not wear a mask, you know, take the temperature, not take the temperature, um, those kind of things. There's so many questions. Um, and as we relate with our families, I know that you have either gotten really, really close and uh, connected with your families, or you are so sick of your families that you are ready to scream. And I would say, depending on the day uh, that I talk to you, would determine which one was which for you. Um, so I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand what you are today, because some of you are sitting there going, I need out of this house. And some of you are like, man, I really had a great day with my family today. Um, so I'm not going to ask you. But do you ever feel like you're living in two different worlds sometimes? Like one world is like with your family at home and you act one way with your family and then another way with basically everybody else. Um, Cindy and I, um, we are so different. If y'all know us, and you've gotten to know us over the years. No. Um, we are so different. Um, she would be super happy to be home all day, almost every day, and just hanging out. Um, I need to be out with people and doing stuff all the time. Um, there's a lot of differences. And we probably take it out on each other more. This is one of those little secret things that, that we do at home that maybe nobody would ever think or see. But every now and then, it'll just come out. And then five minutes afterwards, we're like, what did we just say to each other? And why did we do that? And we never do that to anybody else. Neither one of us would. But to each other, it's like, you know, and afterwards, you're like, where'd that come from? You know? Um, but I think a lot of us kind of have those things. Um, and before you judge me too much, um, uh, I know that you guys have those same kind of things too. This guy here said that one of his secret things at home was that he liked to, uh, sing princess songs and he would never, ever, ever let anybody know that he sang princess songs. So when they come into his office, it's like, Hey, let's put on some Drake or Lecrae or what, you know, all those, whatever. Uh, but at home. His go-to is princess songs. Okay, uh, so Did you say princess songs. Princess, not prince. Okay, princess. I was going to say prince. I was going to say yeah. Like Disney it's princesses. So we all <laughs> act. We all act in ways at home that we would never act like with our friends or at school or in public or whatever. Okay. Not only are we weirder at home, <clears throat> but most of us are a little more difficult at home like what I was sharing with you with, uh, with me and Cindy. Um, so um, think about this. 
I'm going to give you four things. You would never leave your nasty gym socks on the stairs at a friend's house, but you wouldn't think twice about doing it at your own house, right? Everybody look at your room and think about that real quick. I don't know. I've got a bunch of clean people here right now. I'm thinking about some of you. I'm like, their room is spotless. I don't know. Okay, forget that one. You would never talk to your coach the way that you talk to your mom or your dad, right? You would never be as mean to a teammate as you are to your brother or your sister. Think about how you talk to your brother and sister sometimes. You would never talk to anybody else like that. And like this guy in this story, uh, you probably don't go off nearly as quickly on somebody outside of your house as you do people in your house. Okay? I don't know how you are. I just know how my family is. Okay? But how is that possible? Uh, and why do we do that? Why do we act in two completely different ways? Everybody say me. I don't, you don't need to turn it on. Just everybody together say me. 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 Say it one more time. Me. Me. Now say me, 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 me. I will see your mouth moving. Me, 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 me. Me. That's what you're thinking about at home. That's what I'm thinking about at home a lot of times. There might be a lot of reasons for this, but I think one of the main reasons mm -hmm is that we think our world and everybody else is living in our world. And at home, that's where we need to have that control. We walk in the door and we want to know what's for dinner. And if it's not something we like, what do we do? Really? Lasagna? I can't stand lasagna. You go to a friend's house, they have lasagna. You're like, oh, okay. Sounds good. You just grin and bear it, right? You complain about going to your sibling's band concert or soccer game or ball game uh, to your siblings. But if a friend calls, you're like, I'll be right there. I'm on my way, right? It's so different, okay? Uh, it's our world and we want it to be our way, but that's not nearly as true anywhere else outside our house walls or our home. Most of us wouldn't go to a friend's house for dinner and say, yeah, I hate lasagna. We would never tell the coach we aren't coming to the game because we had other plans. Uh, where is Logan at? Logan, Logan, Logan. Logan. Hey, would you ever tell your coach you got other plans when you were having practice? Definitely not. Definitely not. Because <laughs> you might not be on that team or you wouldn't play the next game, right? So even if we know we can get attitude with people at school, it's never to that level, never to that level, okay? We all tend to be not just the realest, but the worst version of ourselves at home, which is crazy, okay? No matter what's happening, we always seem to ask ourselves this question, how does it affect me? How does it affect me? I mean, think about it. Everything we say or do at home is in response to how that question is answered. How does it affect me? Maybe you'd say, my family loves hamburgers, but I'm a vegetarian. I see her. Okay, <laughs> smile at me. Good. So what do they do? They go out for burgers after the game. And I'm over here trying not to puke, eating this black bean version of this whatever stuff this is. So I make a point to let everyone know how bad it is over and over and over and over. I don't go... I don't get to go out with my friends because I have to babysit. How does that affect me? Well, it's not fair. So I'm going to give my parents an attitude over and over and over. I studied hard for that test. And my sister sits there and scrolls on TikTok all night. And she does better on the test than I did. And I'm super annoyed. And I keep telling her and treating her in a bad way over and over and over because she did better than I did on a test, okay? So what I don't think a lot of us realize as we think about our lives at home is how much our response to this question, how does this affect me, changes the vibe in your house. If you're thinking about you all the time, it's going to change the vibe in your house all the time. As we respond to how things are affecting us, the people in our house are responding to how we're affecting them. Then we respond to that, and most of us don't realize we're playing a key role in the general feeling of our house, okay? Not always true, but a lot of the time it's true, okay? So the question is, what do you do about it? 
So here's, here's what we do about it. What do you do when things are tough at home, when the mood is off, when you know you're part of the reason things are tense, but you have no idea what to do about it? Okay, so that's kind of where we're heading tonight. Um, who, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this on recording. You gotta raise your hand. Who has watched at least one episode of the Tiger King? I see those hands raised in the back. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't see yeah. Bernard and Chloe down there. Yeah, you see their hands? <laughs> yeah. okay. I hate Tiger King. All right, but you watched some of it? No, I just watched the memes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, you don't need to tell me that your family is hard, but the good news is all of this, uh, and all of this is that the difficulty that you face with your family, it's not unique, and it's been going on for a long, 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 long time, okay? One of the things that I love most about the, uh, the Bible is that how it gives us a real look at real people who lived real lives with real problems. And over these next couple of weeks, we're going to spend some time looking at the life of Joseph, okay? Uh, I'm going to ask you what you know about Joseph in just a second. Um, he's a guy who's just like us. He found himself in all kinds of situations, all kinds of situations that he didn't know what to do, okay? Um, his story's kind of wild. And this says, the reason I ask you about uh, Tiger King, it says it's like the most dramatic Netflix show you've ever seen, Tiger King. There are murder plots. He's sold into slavery. He's unfairly put in jail. It twists and turns and goes all over the place. And the drama never seems to stop. Okay? Uh, and we're going to get into all that as we go through the next couple of weeks. But it all starts with this drama in his family. Okay? So I'm going to put this up here. And I'm going to see if you can see it. Mm. Why don't you pop in just to me there, Shane? Uh, hold on. Give me just a moment. Okay. I'm trying to pull that image up right now. I'm searching for it. Let me. Can y'all see it... that? Kind of, sort of. It's too little, isn't it? Um, let me, give me just a second. I'll, give it, I'll get it loaded in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I'm showing you here is, um, so Joseph, who was Joseph's father? Anybody? Anybody, anybody? Jacob. Jacob. Joseph. And who was Jacob's father? Isaac. Isaac. And there we go. Isaac's we got father? it. Yeah. Keep going, guys. You're doing great. Who was Isaac's Abraham. father? Abraham. All right. So that's Abraham. a little bit of a lineage. Okay. How many brothers did Joseph have? Hey, there we are. Eleven. He had 11 brothers, correct. All right, so if you look at this little chart here, uh, Jacob got married to Leah, okay? So Leah is the older sister of Rachel. Guess who Jacob loved? He loved Rachel. He loved Rachel. He married Leah and had to stay with her for seven years uh, before he could marry Rachel, according to the dad, okay? So these other two, Zilpah and Billah, uh, are servants of these two sisters, okay? Um, so Jacob is married to Leah. They have seven or have six boys, Reuben, Simon, or Simeon, Levi, Judah, uh, Issachar, and Zebulun, okay? Um, not in that order, but they have six, or six sons. Eventually, Jacob is able to marry Rachel, but Rachel isn't able to have kids, okay? Um, so Jacob then has two sons with Zilpah, which is Leah's servant, which were Gad and Asher, and has two sons because Rachel said, you know, um, since I'm not able to have kids, then here's my servant. And so Dan and Naphtali are born from Billa, okay? Eventually, Jacob and Rachel conceive a son, and his name is. Somebody on mute. His name is. Joseph. Joseph. Okay, whoever whispered that. His name is Joseph. So, guess who Jacob's favorite son was out of all these sons? 
Joseph. 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 Eventually they had Benjamin and that was the youngest son. We'll get into that later. But so we've got Joseph and Rachel that he loves, Joseph that he loves the most, and everybody knows that he's the one that, jo that Jacob loves the most. Okay. All right. So that's kind of setting the scene for you of where we are. Um, sounds like a scene on TLC or something that you've got uh, one guy, four women, 12 kids from four different mothers, and the dad has his favorite son, which is Joseph, okay? And everybody knows that his favorite son is Joseph. All right, so we're in Genesis now. Genesis 37, 6, and 7. And I'm just going to read it to you. He, which is Joseph, said to them, his brothers, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. This wasn't your typical dream that they would have had, and the brothers knew it. They knew it wasn't about the grain. They knew it was some kind of symbolism that was going on, okay? It was all about power. And Joseph was sending his message to his brothers, and he was saying, hey, guys, listen. I think, actually, I kind of know that I'm going to be more powerful than you guys one day. And when that day comes, you're all going to bow down and worship me. So he's already got the favorite son. He's already loved by J uh, Joseph and Rachel the most. And now he's telling them, and he's the youngest, and he's telling them, you're going to be bowing down to me one day. Okay? So the passage goes on to this scripture right here. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more. They didn't just now start hating him, but they hated him all the more because of the dream and what he had said. Okay? So this was a really harsh thing that he's just said. Joseph's brothers were over, uh, you know, the robe, you know, the coat of many collars and all this stuff. Uh, you guys know that story, right? Take, yeah, okay. Um, and the dreams that he'd have. And then Joseph had this dream, uh, another dream about the sun and the moon and the stars bowing down to him. And guess what? In that same message, it included his parents bowing down as well. It tells his dad, Jacob, and his brothers, who now hate him even more. So that probably wasn't his best move, kind of throwing all that at him at one time. Can you imagine the tension in that family? One dad, four moms, 12 boys, and now the favorite son who goes around telling people he's having visions of everybody bowing down to him. Okay? Great family life, right? Can you imagine living in that situation? So, Joseph wasn't, wasn't acting in a way that he was considering any of that. And I'm going to tell you that as I read through this lesson, I've never, ever thought about this story in this light. Never. I've never really, you know, kind of let it go that way. Joseph was behaving like all of us do in our family sometimes, hyper aware of how we are being treated and not at all aware of how it affects anybody else. I didn't get my lasagna that I wanted. She got her whatever, and now I'm going to throw a fit about it and act ugly the rest of the night. Or I'm the youngest. I got the car. My two oldest got nothing when they got to my age. I'm going to stick it in their face and let them remember it over and over and over. Okay? He's just thinking about himself. Joseph's family was the same way. All the brothers could see was how the whole situation affected them. It was unfair. It was not just that they were treating him this way. Uh, Joseph received that robe. Uh, he did as a gift. It was like being given a brand new car when he turned 16, while all the other brothers had to share mom's minivan that they've had for 20 years, right? It wasn't right, and they saw how wrong it was. So the truth is, even though these few verses are about more than some strange dreams and a coat, it's about how the tension in the family was never dealt with. The tension was left 
to grow. And I'm not going to go off on this tangent, but does that feel similar to what's going on in our world right now? This tension that has never been really dealt with, it's been kind of touched on just a little bit, but never really dealt with. And the tension right now is just, it's just overflowing in the whole United States and out into the world because the tension was never dealt with in a way that really mattered, okay? And in this story, that tension was never dealt with either, okay? So I'm gonna just throw a bunch of things at you. So just follow along on the screen. Why are we reading the story today? To show us that family has always been complicated. To teach us to pay attention to how our actions and even situations affect the people we live with. To remind us that tension that's left unresolved will never, ever, ever just go away. It will always escalate into something bigger. I can tell you that about my family. If we just let it go and are quiet about it and don't talk it out, that's one of the good things about Cindy and I. We don't have a problem talking it out, okay? Um, but if we let it go, two years later, it's gonna come back and it's gonna be stronger and harsher because we never dealt with it, okay? Um, but until then, what could everyone in the family have done differently? So we're gonna list these. Joseph could have started to see himself as part of the problem as one person in a large family and not the center of that family. Number two, the dad could have recognized how his favoritism was impacting everybody else. He didn't notice that and he didn't do anything about it. Like I said, I've never looked at this in this light before. The brothers could have chilled out a little bit on the grudges, right? What's the big deal? Chill out. And then everybody could have ignored Joseph's dreams and not allowed their insecurity con to control them. So the point is, Joseph's family drama isn't all that different than ours, okay? It really isn't. And if you look at your family, some of your families aren't gonna go through all these dramas right now. You might go through them when you get married. You might go through them next year, when you go off to college, when you whatever, okay? Uh, whether you're the favorite one or the mad one or the firstborn or the middle child or the lastborn, the quiet one, the one with the gold medal and slamming doors or whatever, okay? Uh, there's a role that you play in your family. So pay attention. This whole thought today is pay attention to how your words and your actions contribute to this whole tone and the temperature of your house. Okay? If you're thinking me, 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 me all the time, it's going to be so different. Are you improving it or are you making it more tense? And then decide what you want your role to be from here on out. Okay? So here's the big bullet point right here. Pay attention to how you affect your family. Pay attention to how you affect your family. I'm going to read Philippians 2, 3 through 8 for you, okay? Um, and as I read this, think about how you're going to choose to treat your family. If you aren't sure where to begin, kind of look at this passage in this letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, okay? Uh, in some ways, these people worked a lot like family, and were trying to figure out how to live together. Um, and I think we kind of work a lot like family as a youth group or as a church. And right now, we're trying to figure out, you know, uh, what do we do? You know, uh, the title of the lesson is, what do we do when we don't know what to do? Okay? Um, so our first thought in this reopening and everything is, you know, I need to put others first. I need to think of other people. I need to make sure that I'm being Christ to others. And with us thinking about rejoining uh, back together as a youth group, how is that going to look? You know, um, we don't want to be selfish about it. We don't want to say, you know, this is my group. This is my group. I want to do this and this and this. We've done it like this all the time. I want it back like this now. We've got to come in to this kind of new way of worshiping, a new way of meeting, and think of other people. How can we reach other people? How can we help that person that's 
not been with us on Zoom for the past two months? Um, how can we grow and then share that with other people? Okay, so this scripture says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. So Paul's the one who wrote this to the church at Philippi. And he says, look, Jesus sets the example here. He gave up his privileges that came with being God. He deserved to be treated like God because he was God, but he didn't require that of people. He chose to serve, have compassion on everybody, even when they didn't deserve it. And Paul is reminding this church at Philippi and us to be that kind of person with everybody around us. And tonight, that, those people around us that we're focusing on is our family. It can go out into our community or into our youth group or into the world and into the situations around us, okay? So the million dollar question is, how do we do that when we don't know what to do at our own house? We start by paying attention to how we see ourselves. How do you see yourself? Do we think or act like we're better than people in our own house or in our own family or in our youth group or in our church or in our community or in the United States? Probably at times, whether we want to admit it or not. So tonight is kind of thinking and taking a little time just to be quiet and think about how we are treating others and how we think about ourselves. Okay. What would it look like to treat your siblings or your step siblings or your cousins or your mom or dad or grandma or uncles or whoever is in your house as equal and even maybe more important than you? And you're like, oh, that's what Christ calls us to do. Okay. Maybe the hardest thing of all is to invite someone else to speak into you kind of like what we're doing right now, how to treat your family. Okay. It's pretty hard to see clearly your role in your family, but everybody else around you, guess what? They're seeing it. Everybody's seeing it. Okay. Um, if you're treating them in a great way, everybody's seeing it. If you're treating them like junk and trash, Everybody else is seeing it. When you're like, I don't treat them that way. Maybe somebody else needs to speak into you, okay? So uh, one of the things we can do is asking someone older, wiser, uh, that's one of the best things to do when you don't know what to do. Find somebody to ask and talk to, okay? Um, so as we go forward into this new way of having youth and different things like that, um, our small groups are going to have to be real small groups. We've talked about small groups. We've created small groups, but they haven't really been, I'm going to have this group of six people and I'm going to check up on them. I'm going to encourage them. I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to have a leader in my group and maybe a uh, senior or a college person in that group that's going to kind of speak into me. And when I have questions, I can go talk to them. That's what we are going to have to move into. Okay. Cause you can see right now, we've got 12 squares on this zoom. There are so many out there that we aren't speaking into. I pray that they're getting, they're being spoken into some way that they're taking it on themselves, that they're reading scripture, that they're whatever's going on. They're doing devotions. Okay, I need this time with you. I need time with uh, other Christians to speak into me. And we all need that. 
okay? So that's one of the things we're gonna be starting uh, and really pushing. So uh, adults that are on here and adults that maybe will be listening later, uh, we're gonna be contacting you. Uh, seniors and college age students, we're gonna be contacting you. We need to work together and we need to have these stronger groups and be speaking into each other. One of the things about a Zoom meeting some of people don't feel comfortable talking in these kind of groups, and we totally get that, okay? Some people aren't joining us right now because they're afraid we would say something or they would have to say something that's gonna be recorded. We get that too, okay? If you're only with four or five or six other people and you know that that communication is gonna be tight and you're not gonna share it with anybody else, that's what strengthens us, okay? So imagine for a second, if everybody in your family did this, what if everybody paid attention to how they affect everyone else? What would it do for your relationship with the people who live at your house? What would it do for the general level of tension or peace at your house? What if it started with you? Because it totally could. And that's what we're hoping and encouraging you to do. Start with you. Get the me, me, me out of your head and think of the other people in your house. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna sit and talk about what's coming up in the future, okay? Let me pray. God, we praise you for this day and we thank you for uh, reminding us and maybe letting us uh, look at this story of Joseph in a new light, um, a way of maybe how he uh, was maybe the entitled one or the chosen one in that family. And he really was, he really was because if it hadn't been for him, uh, you know, the lineage would have been lost and all of the, the things that happened to his family. Uh, he had to be the one, but the way that he, he handled himself maybe could have been different in his family. The way that his brothers handled themselves could have been different. The way that his father uh, treated him maybe could have been different. So God, I pray that you'll just kind of open our eyes to that story and maybe let us look at our lives at our home. How are we treating others around us? Are we having that me, me, me attitude all the time, or are we having the Christ-like attitude? So God, I pray that you'll encourage us um, as the food is brought out next time and it's not exactly what we want. God, let us be thankful. Let us be uh, encouraging. God, as, as our brothers or sisters are bugging us to death, God, uh, let us treat them in a little more, uh, with a little more humility and a little more kindness uh, as we go. So God, I pray that you'll just speak into us. Let us see where we are and open our eyes to the ways that we can be more like you and our families. In your name we pray, amen. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll continue in this series with Joseph and the different things that are going on in his life. Um, and uh, so that's, that's where we are. Anybody need to share anything? Anybody, anybody? Okay, so um, I'm just going to kind of go over some things and some ways that, uh, that we've met and some thoughts that we've had. And uh, Richard, Shane, anybody else that wants to jump in and uh, give your thoughts? Or if you guys have thoughts, we want to hear them. Um, so the church is, the plan right now is to reopen on June the 14th, which is not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, okay? Both services will be in the activity center and they'll be at the same times, nine o'clock and 1130. Um, there will be no other services happening. There won't be any child care, child children services. Um, there won't be Sunday school. Uh, there will be only church service at nine o'clock and 1130, okay? Um, social distancing will be practiced so when you come in the gym, you're gonna see uh, somebody that'll greet you at the door. They're gonna seat you like you're at a restaurant. They're going to take you in with your family and you'll be seated from the front to the back. So you won't come in and find your seat and be looking for whoever to sit with. You're gonna be seated. They're gonna put down however many chairs are in your family and you will sit, sit with your family together and then they'll take six feet from you and start the next family, okay? When that row's full, they'll go back six feet and they'll start another row. So I just want you to know what to expect uh, when you get here in two weeks, okay? Um, 
we want to begin having real live youth services again. Um, our thought is to start next week. It may be two weeks from today. Um, but I just want you to know that we're uh, kind of kicking that around. We've gotten permission uh, from, from the leadership to go ahead. Uh, but it will be different. It will be social distancing uh, either outside or in the gym. Uh, might be a mixture of both. Um, we'll have the chairs set up. There won't be any games before like volleyball, basketball, anything like that uh, at this point. Hopefully we'll get back into that eventually. But, um, but we will do games like what Shane just did with us or some other games. Except they're uh, going to be a lot cooler. I can promise cool. you the old test emoji, just a cheesy <laughs> game. I'm telling you that right now. They'll be a lot better, I promise. Yeah, you know, so we can do, you know, like uh, categories, you know, some games like that that, that you would know – but that you wouldn't have to be right up on top of each other to the player or whatever. So um, just want you to know that's happening um, with the band. We really, really want to get something going again um, with, with worship with the band. Um, so we're going to be contacting you guys in the next couple of days, probably um, to see which of you are uh, willing and able and which one of your families are comfortable with it because that's the other thing uh we want to make sure that you know we're not requiring we're not making you we're still going to probably do this on either a facebook live or a zoom on wednesday night so that those that aren't comfortable coming can still join us in that way um so we're still going to have that option uh sunday morning service is still going to be recorded like that on facebook um so that those that aren't comfortable coming can still stay home Okay, so we want you to know that. We don't want to pressure anybody at all. Uh, it's going to be a voluntary kind of thing. But if we're able to and have enough that can, uh, then we want, to, uh, we want to do that. If it's me and Shane leading, we can handle that too. But uh, if, if we're able to you know, go a little bit more um, with others, then uh, we're not sure how that's going to look either. So I just want you to know that we're uh, – we're, We're trying to figure out what care. to do when we don't know what, when we to, don't do. Know what to do. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, how many of y'all saw that little video I did with John Bon Jovi? You do what you can when you do what you can. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so it's kind of like that. You know, you do what you what you think and what you pray about and what you feel like God's leading you to do and what is in line with the uh, the guidelines that have been set forth for us to follow. Okay. Uh, we're going to be real careful. If we do meet, we're going to be wearing masks. So you need to be gathering you a mask, finding and, you a mask. And whether, and whether you agree with that, and we're not going to get into the civil liberties discussion, this is what the leadership of our church has decided. And it's really based around Romans chapter 12 is the whole premise of what our meeting was last night. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10, it says, outdo one another, outdo one another in showing honor. Yes, you may not want to wear a mask, but that person that's coming to visit the church doesn't know anything. That new person coming to youth, I've, hey, I've been out of church for so long, I'm going to use this opportunity. I need a mask, though. That's why, that's why our church leadership is doing this. It's a form of outdoing one another and respecting people, even though, for me personally, I hate wearing a mask. I hate it. I despise it. Um, I have my personal opinions about it, and I'm not going to get into it. but this this verse plain and simple says to outdo one another in showing honor and if this is a way we can outdo one somebody doing honor it's by wearing a mask so that's the premise of it and i'm saying this not only for you guys listening in right now but more so when this gets posted later on watching videos and they want to know why we're making why we're requesting or strongly urging that you wear masks you can read you know the the post that david put out today um he words it more eloquently uh, than I am right now. So um, I just want to butt in right there real, real quick, yeah, Greg. Go that's ahead. That's good. That's good. So uh, if you wonder why we don't wear them as we're singing or speaking, you can kind of hear the muffledness of this right now. Um, but when we are sharing together and in, in that group, it's not for me. It's for others that come. And when you wear a mask, it's not for you necessarily. Okay. Uh, you're showing Christ's love for others uh, and showing that respect for them, okay? Um, so, um, having said that, 
um, I'm going to be sending out some texts in the near future because uh, we don't want to meet next Wednesday and have two people show up because nobody's comfortable showing up yet. Okay. Um, and we understand that, that a lot of people maybe still are not comfortable with that. Um, the, the numbers are showing that about half of what had been coming to the church services is what's going to show up on Sunday. Um, and then hopefully gradually as people feel more comfortable, they'll start coming back also. Uh, Cowan has suspended all camps for the rest of the year. So if you didn't hear that, um, you know how they had suspended them through June and we're going to reevaluate for July and August. They reevaluated and they are going to be closed the rest of the year. Camp in so, a box, y'all. Camp in yep. a box. So Get if it, you haven't got the camp the in a box, it's 50 bucks. Um, and if anybody does go order that, tell me so I can pay you some money to get a t-shirt from it because <laughs> you can do add-ons like you get, like peak is I see y'all getting one box and adding like four shirts or something, you know, yeah, we did that. We um, added on shirts. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's 50 bucks and you get devotions and games and uh, a t-shirt and a cup and I don't know what all. You can see it online. I posted that, and the church has posted it. So. And it should be all age-specific. So something that younger middlers is going to be getting should be different content than what high school high school should be getting. Right, right, right. And for middle school. So they're going to be doing age-specific things for their camp in a box. Right. So if, if you want to get a couple for your family, if you've got two or three brothers, sisters, that's cool. But, you know, if you wanted to kind of split the middle, you know, and get whatever's in the middle and all of you use it, then that's, that's cool too. Um, church lands right now is no overnight stays. So that's, that's where that has, has kind of settled right now. Uh, there are no overnight stays at church lands and they are at this moment, uh, discussing day trips because that is still kind of off the table through, I think June, but uh, anybody want to help June, me with right. that? Yeah. It's through June. Okay. Um, so our thoughts of going out to church lands are kind of on hold for uh, even a day trip right now. Um, overnight trips, we're pretty sure that's going to be out for the rest of the of the summer. So um, I just want to update you. I don't want you to be thinking, you know, uh, when we said, you know, we're going to try to do something, we are trying to do something, but uh, we've got to stay within the guidelines that are, you know, kind of given to us. And and what's going to happen moving forward as well is this is a this is changing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis with the updates. So later on in June, first part of July, we're going to reevaluate. We're going to reassess. The trustees are going to reassess church lands. So this could change three weeks from now. But Correct. this is this is where we're at right now, given the information we know and what how our our community is being affected. Right. And like Shane said, the leadership is supposed to meet uh, beginning of July again, like we just met yesterday, and uh, talking and discussing where we're at at that point and what the country's like. And uh, Raleigh County has done super good, so, uh, but we don't want to have a false sense of security there either. So um, we've got a lot of people that are still very apprehensive about even opening with the church. So uh, I just want you to, to remember that as you – have your discussions um it's not about me 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 you know um it's about what's best and us treating each other uh with christian love uh in everything that we do so um as the summer comes along if you have thoughts and if you have ideas of ways that we could you know get together in small groups once we set these up if we could get six to eight people together um, they're talking about maybe even letting us choose maybe the social room at some point, you know, for one group to where you could spread out there and another group could be in the gym or something like that. Um, you know, so uh, we're thinking maybe we could do something in that direction. Uh, Richard is dying to teach uh, Sunday school, you know, the lessons that he was doing. Um, it's just killing him not to be able to keep doing that Bible study. So uh, we might have, you know, a high school group that, meets with Richard at some point, you know. Um, so we, we want to do what's best within the guidelines. Um, and if you see something or hear of somebody else doing something in a certain way, man, text us, call us, let us know, you know, because we might have never thought of it that way, you know, and it might work for our church. Um, what's it going to look like in July or next fall? 
Shane, you want to take that one? <laughs> what do we do when we don't know what to do? That is the question. Um, what it may look like, we're assessing again in July. We're, we're at the one month marker. Um, and that's something that the leadership of the church that us, us three, Greg, Richard, and myself, along with David is, is how do we create community? How do we create connections with you guys to do church now? How is that going to change? How is that going to look? We don't know. So ideas, 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 um, you know, we're open for, for everything. When we head into fall, school is going to look different churches. This is, it's, this is our new pattern here. Um, and all, all I can do is just continue to hold fast to what the Lord has and know that he's in control, um, and, and roll with the punches to be, you know, to keep everybody, to be, keep everybody as safe as we can. Um, right. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so our main goal with you is, uh, keep studying, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot out the devotion for this series, uh, this evening. So it's a five week series. So there'll be, um, 25, you know, daily devotions with that. Um, if I see a lot of you, I saw Andrew, uh, Pike, he, he shares some verses every now and then, uh, today's, I can't remember it, but if y'all go back on Andrew's either Instagram or Facebook, it was a really good post today, a good verse that was, uh, very timely. Um, but keep studying. Um, if you don't know what to look up or what to, what to do, you know, uh, text one of us, man, we can, you know, uh, figure out where you're at and what you're struggling with or questions that you have. And there's devotions on that. And we can kind of point you to the right scriptures or whatever. Um, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to share with you. Um, and anybody that is not with us on here on Zoom, um, we hope to see them either next week or week after next. Um, as, as we begin this, this, uh, meeting back together again. So, um, I'm going to talk to Logan and, uh, Claire. Yep. That's it. Right. Yep. After we, what? after we finish up here. So y'all hang out just a minute. After real we quick, finish. real quick, Greg, with everybody that's on here, I, I see Audrey and Claire and Ty and Kylie and Chloe, you guys unmute your microphones. What, what do you all think? What do you all think about the church reopening? Good thing, bad thing, questions, concerns. Um, 